to find a template that has the interval data collection tool, you can just go to your libraries and then go to Motivity Public Curriculum. You can search for this template by doing Control F and typing in interval, or you could just scroll down just a little bit and you will see a template that says zero dash interval data template. You would then assign this template in the usual way to your learner. In this case, I've already assigned this template to my learner, Merida. I'm going to show you how this template looks in the editing tool and also how this program will look once you're actually running a session or when your staff are running a session. So here is my template. We'll go into edit. And for now, I'm going to turn the edit editor off just so we can really see what these targets look like. So we have a target for partial interval data collection, whole interval data collection, momentary time sampling, and then count per interval is just another example, but you can actually use any of the instruments, data collection instruments during an interval. But we'll show you what this one looks like. So we can start a simulated session. And what you'll see is all of these targets and they have gray bars. These gray bars show you the interval and it will tell you below the gray bar how long your interval is. In this case, my interval intervals are only 10 seconds long. So you'll go to the right hand side and you'll click start intervals. With partial um, interval data collection, I can take data at any time. So I could say yes at this time. It will continue the interval until the very end. Once an interval expires, you'll actually hear a little chime go off that will signify to you or to your staff that it's time to take data if you have not already. Um, if you have to walk away or if let's say you're taking data on another target at this time, no worries because your progress of intervals are being measured down here with your interval tracker. So if you were in a different uh, program at the time, your intervals are still being, um, still being tracked and you could come here, click on this, and you can actually select the data for the interval. If let's say you weren't comfortable um, taking data for one of the intervals because maybe you did not know if the behavior occurred or did not occur, you can actually skip it and it will not affect your data. This will just be counted as something that is an indeterminate uh, data, data point. So this will not count for or against your data total. So maybe you felt good about taking data on these and here we are and now we've caught up again and you can see that the interval is going to expire yet again. At any time, you can push stop intervals and it will pause your timer. Um, when you're ready to resume, you can just push resume intervals and it will uh, pick up where it left off. Okay, so that's the partial interval. This is what the whole interval would look like. In this case, um, we've selected an option where you can only take data at the end of an interval, which would make sense for whole interval uh, data collection because we're looking to see if a behavior did or did not occur for the entirety of that interval. Same thing, it will t uh, track how long or how many intervals you need to uh, catch up on. It will tell you how much more time is left in an interval, all of that good stuff. So maybe we didn't feel comfortable uh, taking data on this interval because we missed it. So we'll wait till this one expires and then we can take data again. Here we are with momentary time sampling. This one will also um, allow you to take data at any time if that's the option you select, and I'll show you what that means in just a moment. Um, but it will also alert you once the 10 seconds are over that it is time to take data. And you can take data here, or again, you can take it up here. We'll stop the intervals here. Um, finally, we have this example of count per interval where you can be taking data uh, beyond a yes or no um, during an interval. Maybe you're tracking a behavior, how often that behavior occurs during an interval. Um, what's nice about this is that even if this interval expires, you can actually cont can continue taking frequency data. And once you're done, you can click the done button. And what the done button will do is it will align this number that you've entered in to your frequency data to the current interval you're taking data for. So even though we're now two intervals behind, this nine will be aligned with this first interval. So we'll push done. And now we've moved on to the next one. Again, we can skip intervals if we need to, or if we feel like we did not get a good idea of what happened during that interval, and it's not going to affect our total um, when we graph everything. Stop that there. Okay, let's look at how this looks behind the scenes. So we'll turn the editor back on, and here are all of our targets. 
I'll show you how you would add the interval tool, data collection tool, into your template. Um, obviously, we've got our train phase. So in each phase, there is a section that says exercise. Usually, um, this exercise uh, option is going to be selected at any time. When What exercise is alluding to is when are you taking the data? Are you taking it any time throughout the session, or are you taking it on an interval? That's all you have to uh, distinguish. So if it's on any time, it's not going to be an interval data collection uh, target. So you would switch it to on an interval, and then we'll ask you to specify certain things um, just so it knows what kind of interval data collection you are going to be doing, when the intervals, or how, how uh, long the duration of the intervals are going to be, and so on and so forth. So here we have interval type, partial, whole, and momentary. And then we also have how long, you can dictate how long your interval, intervals are going to be. So in this case, I put 10 seconds, but you can do hours, minutes, all of that stuff. This option here is asking you if you would like the intervals to restart continuously, so consecutively one after another, or would you prefer that they are discontinuous, meaning that, let me fix this, meaning that um, your interval might be 10 seconds long, but you can have that interval happen every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, a 10 second interval is going to pop up that I can take data on. So it will not be restarting the interval consecutively one after another. There will be a 30 second pause uh, between each interval. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's come here. Okay, we'll do this. Okay so, okay, so let's start the interval. And it's showing me here what my interval is. So it's uh, 10 seconds for a partial interval every 30 seconds. So here's my 10 second interval. I'll say no, it did not happen. It's going to finish the interval. And now it's going to be waiting for 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, I will have another 10 second interval come up. Um, something I forgot to show you is here on the right hand side is there is an intervals button that you can push. And this will actually allow you to also control the intervals and if they are active or inactive um, while taking data. You can also change um, your alerts to make them audible or muted. Right now they're muted. If I turn them on, then I'll receive a little um, chime once this interval has uh, finished. And I can take data on it. Let me just do this. But yes, I could start my whole interval, my momentary time sampling, and my count per interval up here. I would just have to click Submit, and now they're all started. I can also come up here and make everything inactive again, or decide which ones I would like to have active. And then if I'm not really fond of that chime, I can mute it again as well. So that is how you can use the discontinuous um, tool in the uh, sample. Um, something that some people might do, use this for is they might decide in an hour, oh, I'm sorry, let's not do this one. For every hour, they might want to take data for the first 10 minutes of every hour. So here you would say my sample duration or my interval duration would be 10 minutes, and I want that 10 minutes to restart every hour. So for the first 10 minutes of every hour, you'll be taking data on something. After those 10 minutes expire, um, your system will pause. You can continue taking data as, as you need to until all of the opportunities are filled, um, but you uh, will not have another 10 minute interval come up until the hour has expired. So let's change this back to continuously, and I'm going to change this back to 10 seconds. There we go. Um, for here, you can select whether or not, uh, or at what point you want uh, data to be taken during your interval. So you can decide to have it taken throughout um, an interval at any time, or after each interval ends. Um, you can see the difference here when I have an interval that um, will not allow me to take data until the interval ends, you'll see that this area is blurred out and I cannot take data at any time until these 10 seconds have expired. Once that happens, then I'm allowed to then take data. Of course, you can then see it unblurs and I'll take data and now it blurs again. You can of course decide to do an option where it's throughout the uh, interval at any time and this area will be um, available to you at all times throughout your intervals. 
great. The last thing that you would need to indicate is when you would like your intervals to start. Um, this is just setting the default. Your staff, when they start a session, can determine if the intervals should start right away as they start the session or if they need to start later and they can manually start, this, start the intervals later. But what you are dictating here is what the default setting is going to be set to. So if it's selected at start now, that means that if your staff member um, agrees to start the intervals right then, your intervals will start right when the session is starting. If your default is start later, the default will be that your RBTs or BTs need to go in and manually start the um, intervals in the programs if they don't select the start now button at the beginning of the session. And then one last thing just to show you, like I said before, you can use any measure or, or measurement instrument with your interval data collection tool. So let's go down to count per interval. As you can see here, we have the count instrument selected. However, we can change this to anything. A countdown timer, let's see if you can see it here. Um, we've got our countdown timer. You can have custom prompts, which is what these are, where it says yes and no. And here you go. We can have a duration, um, where you can take duration during an interval. Of course, integer, where you can just put in a number during the interval. Pass fail, where it's just plus or minus, or you can put in some anecdotal data um, during your interval. So this, uh, this measurement tool can align with any of these other uh, measurement <coughs> instruments. So let's show you now what this would look like from the perspective of a BT while they are doing their, um, their session. So let's go ahead and just update this, and then we will start a session for Merida. Okay, as you can see, I have a lot of different interval programs running. So let's um, start all of these later. So this is what your RBTs will see. They can select to start now or start later. All of these have been pre-selected at start now because that was the default I put in my template. However, they absolutely have the ability to select start later. And we'll just do that for now. Okay, and now we'll start our new session. So let's go ahead and just show you what this is going to look like. So for my behavior reduction, I have an interval data for SIB or aggression towards others. Let's just start the intervals for SIB. Okay, let's say I've got this going, but I want to be working on other things. So I can actually close that program and I still have my tracker down here and I can go to, go to my program actions and start taking data on this. Um, I see that my tracker is blinking at me, so I can come here real quick. Uh, it did not happen, so I'm just going to go back to what I was doing. Uh, I might go to my task analysis, start taking data with this. Maybe because I was so engrossed in this program, I actually did not pay attention to see if SIB had occurred. So I can either have a button that says did not track or I can just simply skip that interval. And then I can go to the next one and say confidently no. And we can go from there. At any time I can select to stop the intervals and it will stop counting them. But what's nice about this is that your staff can have the intervals tracked um, in this bottom left hand side even while they are opening other programs and at any time too they can actually come to this right hand side click on intervals and actually turn them on even if they haven't opened the program um, all they would have to do is select which ones to activate and then click submit okay and this was a video demonstrating how to access the interval data collection tool how to use it and how it would look for your staff whenever they are running a session that also uses this tool